as you can hear, and as we have said many times, affordable housing is a huge issue. Between jobs and affordable housing, there is no more important issue here in Brooklyn. Deb Howard, who is the executive di director of the Pratt Area Community Council, will tell you a little bit about how we think uh, Ratner is doing a bait and switch in terms of the affordable housing that was promised. Deb? This, uh, this project had promised 2,200 2, units of affordable housing. What we've got so far in the first round is one building that is 360 units, over which 180 are supposedly affordable. But we're talking affordable up to 140% of AMI, 160% of AMI, which means they could, a person could be making or a family could be making $140,000 a year, which, as you know, that's not what is really needed in this neighborhood. This neighborhood lost 441 units of housing when people were displaced place out of this project, including 50 families who were in a homeless shelter that was located on Pacific Street. So what we need is two-bedroom, three-bedroom units that are affordable to those making between 60 and 80 percent of AMI. What we have is 160 units, 180 units that are not affordable to that, that income range. What we do have is instead the very low income that are being they've identified is that they're making up in the affordable units, they're making them all studios and one bedrooms. So you have 150 studio and one bedrooms going to quote the affordable side of the of the of the 360 units. So we have a real problem in that they have skewed what is needed, which is two family housing for families should be for individuals that are low, moderate, and middle income. So that's the issue here. We want to see more affordable units for families in Brooklyn. Thank you. Finally, um, I am very proud to introduce a friend of ours through the entire course of our struggle, a friend to many of the organizations here. Um, the uh, professor at the Grad Center for Planning and Environmental um, and the Environment at Pratt, and a former city, plan city planning commissioner, um, he will tell you about how this project can be fixed. Um, Ron Schiffman, please join us. Good morning. Uh, before I say how I think we can begin to move this project in the right direction, let me say a couple of things that have not been said. First of all, Ratner is not using any of his money to, uh, to develop affordable housing in this borough. He is only using tax subsidies, either bond, tax exempted bonds, or uh, city subsidies that are available for affordable housing. In essence, what he is doing is not increasing the number of units the borough of Brooklyn would get by any, any number at all. In fact, he may be decreasing that number. And the reason for that is the tax exempt bond ability of the city is capped, and it has never, ever gone to the point where it hasn't used all of its tax-exempt bond authority. Its subsidies are capped annually. There's only a fixed number that we get, and we have always spent what we get. And so by putting it over here at Atlantic Yards, what we're seeing is that we're now spending that limited amount of money on much more expensive housing with deeper subsidies necessary, and as a result, we're getting fewer units in the borough than we would have gotten if it went to the other not-for-profits and community-based organizations in the borough to build that affordable housing. So he's not putting a penny of any of the subsidies he's getting from Barclay Banks or from any of the corporate sponsors or any of his own money into this project, and it's just a diversion of resources. I could go on, uh, and I think others have talked about the fact that this is no longer affordable to anybody in the neighborhood. 
in the, in the early 2000s, I worked with ACORN, and I worked with the Mutual Housing Association of East New York. I was one of its founders and worked very closely with the people who I think are dedicated to the provision of housing at ACORN. However, one of the things we fought for at that time was that uh, we look at affordability not based on the region, which include the wealthy suburbs and the wealthy neighborhoods of this borough, but also how we look at only the community boards that surround it. If you look at the community boards that surround it, the average median income there is in the 30s and 40s. If you look at the surrounding areas or the sta standard metropolitan statistical area, it's higher into the 80s and 90s, and that's what skews all these rents up to the point that the constituency that ACORN and others fought for will not be able to afford any but a handful of the units that are being proposed. In addition to the 400 some odd families that were displaced, Ratner's own EIS, the Environmental Impact Statement, talks about 2,929 people being in jeopardy of losing their homes in the surrounding area through what is called indirect displacement, the gentrification of the neighborhood that comes about through these kinds of investments. So I just really want to put in that despite all of this, Forest City Ratner is not putting one penny of their own money into meeting the needs of low and moderate income families. And I think we should keep them to that promise without allowing HPD or HDC or all the various different groups that are providing subsidies to Ratner to make sure that he meets that obligation and it's not the public crowd that begins to meet those obligations. In the coming months, the state has to redo the environmental impact analysis. In doing that, we demand that they look at the alternative that comes out of the unity plan. Let's take the rest of the site and divide it up into a score, into four to seven different development sites, and let's invite different development teams, different architects to come in and begin to look at the possibility of tr building truly affordable housing that meets the needs of the people that live in the surrounding areas. And let's build the kind of housing that meets the needs of families and not these high-rise towers that, that don't really benefit working class families. So I think one of the basic things we've got to do is fight for that environmental impact review. I think that environmental impact review should do a fiscal analysis of all the income coming in and making sure that there are greater subsidies that are, are available uh, from the pockets of the developers rather than from the public, uh, uh, public treasury. The other thing is I would demand that we look at the area and the region and the impact that this project has made. Because of the new traffic patterns, a lot of the automobiles and trucks now go by Warren houses and Gowanus houses and, uh, and, uh, and it really uh, and Wyckoff houses, and those areas are now suffering with higher rates of pollution that will lead to asthma and greater diseases in those low-income communities. So while we are protecting some of the brownstone neighborhoods, a lot of the traffic that's been generated by this new development, particularly the truck traffic, is being shunted along 3rd Avenue and is having a devastating effect on those communities. The jobs being provided are not uh, living wage jobs. Nowhere do you see the term living wage. And what we mean by living wage is a wage that has benefits and that pays a decent level of salary. These jobs are part-time jobs. They don't add to the economy. And what we need to do is take the remainder of this site, take it away from this one developer, and make sure it benefits the public. This building belongs to us. Let's take it back. Thank you. you haven't figured this out, that this press conference and all of our activities this week, tonight, tomorrow, yesterday, last week, are not about sour grapes about the arena. It's built, we understand that, we will live with that, and people will enjoy it to the best they can. However, I will not step foot in the arena. 
And two, and it's very important for you to understand that we are talking about what we were promised. We are talking about the entire area behind this arena that is now laying fallow, that has been demolished, and that is, belongs to Forest City Ratner for as long as he wants. He's been given 25 years plus to build the rest of this project, and that simply is not acceptable. Um, I'd like to call Dan Goldstein up to tell you what the coalition's demands are so that you clearly understand what we're